Merry Christmas, and welcome to Thinking Deeply About Primary Education, the podcast that makes time and space to really think about pedagogy, teaching and learning, professional development, anything of interest to time poor but enthusiasm rich primary teachers. This week, I'm joined by a number of members of the Tadabe family who very kindly agreed to share their reflections on the year that was 2021, their hopes for 2022, and the sources of inspiration that have kept them going during an immensely difficult year for everyone around the globe. During this episode, you'll hear some of those contributors pushing their luck as if one banging theme tune wasn't enough. But as it's Christmas, their wish is our command. May I present to you Mr. Lloyd Williams Jones. <laughs> absolutely beautiful he's a genius now now this episode is a little different to what we usually do so i'm going to get to the bulk of my bit out of the way at the start before handing over to my guest contributors and many of those kind enough to submit recordings this week point to the influence Tadape has had on their thinking this year but if we're completely honest i owe as much to our wonderful community as they believe they might to me now in october 2020 I suggested to Lloyd Williams Jones that we could kill some time during lockdown by recording a chat about education. And thanks to the kindness of friends and like-minded individuals, I was able to find enough willing participants to release an episode every single Saturday in 2021. And I said at the start, and I'll say it again, even if it were just me listening, to have the chance to talk to such inspirational teachers is worth the effort alone. And as I look back on one full year of Tadape, my overriding emotion is one of gratitude. You know, I owe a massive debt of thanks to everyone who took a punt when the podcast was nothing but an idea, who give up several hours of their weekends or holidays to be interviewed, who give me, you know, without fail, their Tuesday nights to make sure there are always episodes in the bank, who listened and got in touch to share their stories, and who make the Tadabe family the supportive group that it has come to be. I don't use the term family lightly. We might be spread out across the world. We might not speak every day, but when we do, whether it be on Twitter or in the Discord, we're engaged in the business of making the world a better place, one lesson at a time. And next week, you'll be able to catch the podcast live on New Year's Eve at 10 a.m. GMT via the Tadape YouTube channel. And I'll be joined by Shannon Doherty, Neil Almond, Elliot Morgan, Christopher Such, in what will be the perfect opportunity to see exactly how much editing I have to do every single week. But all jokes aside, let's reset and hand over our contributors. Lloyd, take it from the top. So this week, I'm joined in no particular order by Shannon Doherty, Adam Smith, Tom Brassington, Neil Allman, Tom Oakley, Elliot Morgan, and Christopher Such. Christopher, when you think back on 2021, what have you learned this year? Hi, Kieran. This year, I've learned about the importance of structuring professional development in a way that aligns with what we know about how people learn best. It sounds like an obvious thing to say, But I would say for a long time, I was guilty of not putting into practice the lessons that I've learned from teaching children when it came to supporting the learning of adults. Of course, there are differences in providing professional development and teaching children, but there's also a great deal of overlap. This year in particular, I've tried to take greater care to consider Things like motivation, attention span, the importance of practice, and how learning needs to build explicitly on what's come before. I like to think that these are things that I have implicitly considered in the past when providing professional development. But this year, I've definitely started to take greater care with how I address these things explicitly when preparing professional development for teachers. 
Hello, it's Adam Smith here and uh, I just thought I'd record my uh, kind of reflections on the year for the Thinking Deeply um, Christmas special um, at the end of my road. So I'm currently stood um, on the edge of the Thames Estuary looking over from uh, South End and Essex to Kent on a lovely calm December afternoon. So here are my thoughts. Um, things you've learned this year? Oh, a lot. A heck of a lot. Um, I think this year is the first year where I've... Um, sort of felt like I fully made the transition from secondary to primary um, since September especially I, I really feel like I've um, settled in a little bit more into the role of being a primary teacher and I've started to focus on things from a sort of wider range than just like my subject specialism and trying to sort that out and everything else was kind of following someone else's example I guess you could sort of say that I'm starting to move out of that that novice territory slightly although I've probably got a long way to go um, and I think I've learned just so much from uh, reading uh, blogs uh, and and articles and books and things obviously but just from being in the classroom and having a bit more time to kind of reflect on my practice and um, through coaching as well so I guess my big 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 thing this year has been on routines and I've, I've read a lot about routines from the years but my routines this year have been really um, refined <clears throat> and I've just noticed it's such like it makes a huge difference um, to my practice, to my day, to my mental health, to everything really, to just know that I can sort of say certain prompts or countdowns and things like that and that my class respond to them. Um, it provides a sort of certainty um, and a pattern uh, that I think my teaching has been a lot calmer and a lot more um, focused this year, which is really nice. Merry Christmas, Kieran and the Thinking Deeply family. This is Tom Oakley. Um guest on episode 48 about diagnostic assessments. In answer to your question, Kieran, things you've learnt this year. I've learnt lots about other subject areas as a big thank you to the uh, the podcast. I know that lots of the episodes end up having a little bit of a maths theme about them because of your background, Kieran, and I'm really interested in that as a maths advisor myself. But the podcast had so many brilliant contributions about reading, phonics, music, RE, history, geography um, and wider school leadership as well and I think that's been brilliant to think about. So I've learnt lots from the podcast about those subject areas and I've also learnt loads from the recommended reading in the what you're reading for section as well. Uh, in fact two of the things I'm reading right now have come from recommendations by Chris Such so uh, big thank you to you and to Chris and the other regular contributors to the podcast for, for everything you've given us so far in the episodes. Hi Kieran. So I've been thinking a little bit about the things that I've learned sort of over the last 18 months, particularly in this period of change that we've had in education and this opportunity to really reflect on what's important. And um, I think a few things have come up and this is by no means an exhaustive list. I actually think that um, we should have an app similar to the app Time Hop for teachers now, Time Hop shows you all of your sort of social media posts from the past on any particular day. I think it'd be so good to have a, a teach hop where you could hop back in time and see yourself three or five or ten years ago in the classroom and see how your practice has changed. And I think for me, there have been some fundamental changes in what I've done in my classroom over the past couple of years, seeing the importance of cognitive science and research in how we um, help our children to learn and how we learn as well um, so I think that's been really important but I've come up with three things that I think I've learned um, and um, most of them actually come from listening to um, Tadapi over the past t year or so so the first is linked with Adam Smith's episode when he spoke about kind of the awe and wonder that you can find in artwork when thinking about RE and that's really had an impact in my RE lessons I'm constantly now looking for um artistic imp impressions of stories that we look at um, and thinking about how we can compare and contrast different artists' views. Um, that's been really helpful. Um, I'm still very much in the infancy of truly understanding reading and I think that's become more evident the more I read Christopher Such's book, which is fantastic, but um, has led me down lots of different paths and routes to explore as I continue to develop that. And then also um, just learning from other people's experiences in their own particular settings. 
So um, when I listened to Matt Swain's episode with you, um, listened to Gareth Rain and, and John Hutchinson, just hearing how it, across a range of roles in a range of different settings, um, these guys were implementing ideas and putting forward ways of working that were really having a massive impact on the children that they are teaching and um, it's been really inspiring to hear those stories and to consider some of the ways that would work in my setting but also to just continue to want to be ambitious in my role in the way that they were. So what I've learned this year first and foremost of all is timetabling a school which is definitely something that was missing from my skill set I probably wouldn't say that it's still a complete formed skill yet but it's something that I've enjoyed doing and certainly uh, hitting the ground running with implementing new initiatives that are hopefully having an impact on the students and making sure that there's buy-in from all members of staff and kind of doing all the follow-up that goes with that is something that I've really enjoyed learning this year and just how important it is to walk those corridors when you're a little one form, I'm sure with any school, but a little one form entry school, you're fortunate that you can get to know everyone, staff and pupils really well, really quite quickly. So yeah, walk those corridors and and just model all of those interactions that you want to be seen and create your the norm for that school. This year, I think I have learned more about leading in a school and what kind of leader I aspire to be and what kind of leader I don't want to be um as I think everyone learns while they kind of work their way up the ladder I think um I'm learning more about how you roll things out across multiple schools which is exciting but quite daunting as well um I think I've learned that you need to give people time to explore. You can't be too directive straight away. You need to give them time to find their feet and get to grips with something and break it down into small steps, much like we would do with children. Because that's how, that's how people do things. That's how we learn. And so I think part of my kind of trust role this year has been making sure things are broken down and well explained and providing people with as much kind of examples as much good practice as possible so that they're not feeling like they're being thrown in at the deep end from a teaching perspective how truly effective worked examples are at reducing cognitive load especially when teaching long division to um, less confident year six children um, from a leadership perspective just how important prioritizing can be and how as, a, as schools, I think we do a lot of things that we could easily um, reduce or completely um, get rid of. And are there things that you would like to learn more about in 2022? Something I'd like to learn more about in the coming year is writing and the research into it and oracy and the research into that. In particular, I'd like to learn more about the relationship between those and reading and practical ways that each of these can be developed in the classroom. In answer to your second question, things you'd like to learn more about next year, I think it's been great to hear about how people like Matt Swain and Tom Gary and the team at STEP have been supporting early career teachers. But what I'd love to know more about, and something that's really integral to my role in school, but something I'm passionate about as well, is developing new middle leaders and that's not to say about you know taking great teachers out of the classroom but it's about taking great teachers and sharing what they know and sharing their passion with others so I'd love to hear more about how people like yourself and Shannon and Amy Bills are sharing what it is that you do with colleagues and mentoring them and helping colleagues take on those middle leadership roles particularly in the the smaller schools where there might only be three, four or five teachers and they have to wear several hats. So I think that'd be a really interesting to think more deeply about in the new year. Going forward into 2022, thinking about um, 
things that I want to focus on and want to improve on, I guess. Um, there are two things, really, in my geography subject lead role, thinking about the work of Fran Martin, who has kind of thought about everyday geography and how we can make this geography learning not just an isolated lesson for children, but also how we can allow them the opportunity to see this world through that geographical lens. Um, so I'm going to be doing some work on that and hopefully be able to put some blogs out about that in 2022. And also just thinking more considerately about task design across the curriculum, working with our teachers in, in our school and, and certainly trying to improve my own practice as well, um, considering task design and what's really going to be conducive to effective learning. So I'm going to be knocking on Morgz's door over 2022 to talk to him more about that. In terms of the things I'd like to learn more about, it's uh, being strategic about the strategic elements of uh, running a school. Uh, As a leader, it's very tempting to change everything and to change things quickly, but then obviously you run the risk of nothing actually uh, sticking. So I think for me, it's, it's all about thinking about what those high leverage items are within the school that um you can change and kind of you know finding that optimum level of change that can happen within a, a school that leads to uh, not just improved outcomes but long lasting change within the the staff members as well that's something that i'm really kind of looking forward to as well as looking at how we can use the resources that we have within our school and the wider trust to just to work uh, far more smarter than perhaps we currently are. I think for me, uh, what I'd like to learn in the next year is more about how to teach and lead in a high performing school or in different types of schools. I've always worked in schools where the children would be seen as disadvantaged And the school's always been on a journey. It's either kind of just coming off the back of Ofsted and trying to maintain that momentum or it's on its way to Ofsted. And it's like that gruelling process of making sure that everything is of a good quality and the highest standard and consistent and that everyone is working to a a similar level. And things like results have always been a bit hit and miss. And I'd just really like to see how things work in different schools, bigger schools, smaller schools, high performing schools, like I said earlier, and just get to grips with with leading across the board because every school is different. And what works in my one form school currently might not work in a three form school that gets, you know, top 5% SATS results every year. And how you manage change in that kind of environment compared to my kind of environment, I think could be quite an interesting learning curve for me. Um, And then things you'd like to learn about next year. Well, I mean, there's just so much. I think this over these holidays, like I've been doing a lot of reading in two areas. So firstly, in leadership, um, like I'm really interested in um, what people are saying about leadership and some of the perils of generic models of leadership and how like school and trust transformation takes place and the role of like both individual teachers, but also like whole school, a whole trust culture and accountability um, in those it's like almost endlessly interesting to me to to think about schools and how they organize themselves and how certain schools differentiate themselves and things like that um, and my other areas in like um, literacy so uh, I've just read two really phenomenal blogs that I post about on my Twitter um, uh, that Tom Brassington sort of reminded me of about teaching spelling at Key Stage 2 and how we should be taking more of a phonics approach to that Um, And also, like, thinking about uh, planning reading lessons and and how we do that. And, yeah, I don't know. I want to learn more about phonics. I've never taught Key Stage 1. And it's clear to me from the reading that actually phonics is really useful in Key Stage 2 as well. So um, I'm going to dive into a few books about that in the new year. I quite like to learn more about the things that nobody teaches you about, like organisational management and finance and how to write an effective... um, policy that covers all the, all the bases. To round things off, give me one source of inspiration during the last 12 months. One source, of, I can't believe I have to narrow it down to one source of inspiration. 
Uh, I don't really know. One source of inspiration. I guess it's just been this podcast um, because it's uh, there was something I think it was Neil Armand said that sort of imprinted itself on my mind, and that was that it's okay to for your job to be your hobby as well. And um, I used to feel a lot of guilt about like the amount of time I was spending reading or writing about education um, in what would be considered like leisure time or, or like on my long commute or things like that, that I should be, you know, doing more fun things. Um, but actually, I feel like this podcast and this group of people around this podcast have kind of given me permission to to realise that I really do enjoy thinking and talking and reading and writing about education. And um, so I guess it's a really vague answer. Um, but I would say this podcast and everybody on it has been my inspiration. So there we go. Three things. I hope I haven't prattled on too long. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And um, hopefully speak to you all soon. Well, I suppose the Discord, the Thinking Deeply Discord is very good. Helps send across books and papers to read. We discuss the podcast at length. Um, it sort of just keeps you involved with the CPD element outside of school hours, which is where I draw most of my inspiration from. I think I could name lots of different things. I've particularly enjoyed working with early career teachers in the schools I've been working in. Their passion, their dedication, their willingness to learn has been really inspiring. But the one big shout I'm going to give is to Peps McRae and his fantastic uh, books, Lean Lesson Planning, Motivated Teaching in particular. Both of those have been real inspiration for me and the work I've done in schools, and I've recommended those books so many times I can't count now. So big shout out to Peps. Uh, for his work, his writings and his Twitter threads as well. Um, and I hope at some point that Peps and great authors like him uh, will feature on the pod in the future. So last thing for me to say is a big thank you to you, Kieran, to everyone in the Thinking Deeply family uh, as podcast guests and to people on the Discord server. It's been great to share ideas, to ask and answer questions and I'm really looking forward to more of it in the new year. So thank you once again. All that's left for me to say is I really hope that you and Lloyd put a special edition together of the theme tune with one of you playing some jingle bells over the top. I think that would be great. Okay, take care and hopefully see you at some events the other side of the new year. Take four. My inspiration is Shannon because she's wonderful and I learned so much from the conversations that we have and she's a great person to kind of put ideas to and generally tells me to come to my senses and tells me how such a how it's something that I want to do is an awful idea so very grateful to um, be able to talk about education for her to understand what's going on and to be able to provide advice and guidance on certain things my inspiration I would have to say is twofold it's it's our our the friendship group I have of the wonderful teachers that we have and from that obviously came Neil Almond and I think it's a real privilege to be able to to have these conversations and to be challenged and be able to challenge someone about you know the stuff we're doing each day and have difficult conversations and exciting conversations and stuff that really interests us. And if I think back to October half term, when it was uh, Neil's second week of his break and he chose to do free CPD for people on the internet. And I just think that's the kind of person I want to be. So that's my inspiration. And I guess thinking about what's inspired me during the past year, I think really it has been this podcast and the Tadapi family and the members of this family that keep cropping up week on week and and not only showing a fantastic level of skill and expertise and sharing that knowledge with us, but also being willing to be realistic about what everyday teaching is like being able to be honest about their own failings and where and where they've gone wrong in the past and then offering opportunity for us to reflect on what they've already reflected on and um that's been beyond beneficial for my practice i'm i'm so much more of a better teacher 
because of your podcast and and it goes without saying and it probably won't be something that you'll the humble side of you will like but um Kieran I think the dedication that you put into this podcast the hours that you must put in but also the way with which each episode is carefully thought through and crafted and so generously shared as such a valuable resource for teachers I think it I think it really is a testament to the work that you put in that so many people are benefiting from it and are seeing their practice improved as a result of the podcast so long may it continue and finally I'd just say isn't it about time that Tadapi's theme tune was Christmas number one just saying take care everyone bye-bye indefatigable in the face of adversity a loyal friend of the show and to me it feels only right that the last word of 2021 should go to one person thank you all for listening for your constant support I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and a chance to recharge before the new term. I'll see you all at 10 a.m. on New Year's Eve. Christopher, where have you drawn your inspiration from this year? In terms of addressing things that have inspired me this year, I hope you'll forgive me diving a little bit into something from my personal life. My father passed away on Friday 13th of August because of a variety of afflictions, including severe vascular dementia, he'd spent the last couple of years of his life in a care home. I've been incredibly fortunate to see firsthand the care and conscientiousness that typifies those that work in such environments. The people who supported my father in the final years of his life came from all over Europe, all over the world and from the UK. Without wanting to put too fine a point on it, it can be quite a difficult thing to see a loved one so severely diminished. The sensitivity and warmth of those who work in my father's care home has made this whole process bearable. Seeing what they do firsthand has absolutely been a source of inspiration to me. And I think that the work they do should continue to be a source of inspiration to anyone. Thank you.